Hello dragons, my name is Ryan Donaghy and I'm the founder of the Dot Range. I'd like to introduce my first product, uh, T-Dot Brush, the world's slimmest and I believe the most stylish electric toothbrush. Today I'm seeking an investment of £150,000 for 11% share of my business. Now the electric toothbrush market has been growing rapidly in the last 10 years. So there's a massive opportunity as people continue to move from normal toothbrushing to electric toothbrushes. Now there's three big players in the market. We've got Oral-B, Colgate and Philips. And collectively they do have a fantastic range of products. But there's a definite gap in the market. The reality is consumers want something different than the standard medical looking device to brush their teeth with. They want something that's going to match their personality, something that's going to match their style. As we've seen with the evolution of computers and mobile phones and even hair straighteners, these people want something in their bathrooms that really resonates themselves. They want something that looks pretty. So when their friends um, come over to visit, essentially it gets noticed. Now, I haven't actually started trading yet, but I have managed to secure listings in the UK's largest high street retailer, but I've come up against a bit of a stumbling block. And the reason I'm actually here is to get the investment to help pay for the prototyping and tooling costs so that I can actually fulfill those orders. Uh, thanks for your time, Dragons, and I uh, open the floor for any questions. A sleek pitch from a smooth-talking Ryan Donaghy. He thinks he's invented an unforgettable range of toothbrushes, but he needs £150,000 to get them into our shops. That wasn't supposed to happen. That wasn't it? <laughs> this is only a marketing model, by the way, guys, so it's quite fragile. On offer, in return, is a precise 11% of his company. Peter Jones is first to interrogate the business opportunity. You said the public wants something different. Yep. How do you know that? Just, just through internet and, and all the other research points, I've identified there's a big need for something different other than just the normal product. And do you not think Oral-B, Colgate, Philips, do you not think that they will have a wider market research team that will have clearly understood the market, they've been in it for a long time? Yeah, and I think the big thing here is they, they need to appeal to a mass audience. So I'm looking very much at targeting to you know, more of a niche, younger generation um, that really focus on style, etc. So Oral-B are catering to a, a lot wider market, so they need to create a product that's going to have oh, so, more of so a mass appeal. So you're going to go very niche. And then the other thing that really hit me, was the, f which I've never heard before, is that you believe that friends will come over because they want to see your toothbrush. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I think it's something like we've seen with the other products. A lot of everyday accessories have been kind of following this trend where, you know, it used to be OK to have a a blocky phone or a, a very boring accessory, but it's really stepped on the mark. People love fashionable stuff. Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute, Ryan. Isn't this we we are right? talking about toothbrush. Let's get back to the toothbrush, not mobile telephone. I know, I get, I mean, if we look at hair straighteners, for example, a few years ago it was just well, a no, 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 I said, let's go back to toothbrush. <laughs> okay, we'll go back to toothbrush. You, know you said about getting noticed. <clears throat> they come over and it's a way to get noticed. Is this, is that just a chat up line for you? Could be. I could have a sexy toothbrush in the bathroom. It could work very well. Or you could go there and say, I'm doing a bit of market research. Do you mind if I go up to your bedroom and have your, your toothbrush? I, d I just don't You're get You're developing chat-up lines now. I know. I'm just, well, I'm just thinking. <laughs> so, two questions from me, Ryan, is one, why going so niche with a product in a very competitive market? I think the reason I have to go so niche is I am not a multinational. I don't have the millions and millions of pounds of budget to focus on a wider audience. So by having, obviously, a very specific um, demographic that love this style proposition, I'm able to go in there and, and channel my efforts towards that with a little less budget. Now, we're not saying we're going to conquer the world with this toothbrush. We're not going to have the reach that Oral-B and so far, but we still will have a very, very lucrative business and a very, very profitable business. OK, and the second question, which is really important to me, probably more important than the first, and that is that you said that you are going to launch in a major high street retailer. Yep. Who's the retailer, what price are you selling at, what margin are you getting, and what quantity? OK, so we are selling to Boots. In terms of the list price, it's £54. So the overall margin for, for that is 71%. And how many have they ordered? They've uh, given us an initial order for £40,000. Wow. 
Ryan's disclosure of a deal with a big high street multiple is the kind of confidence-boosting detail that appeals to any investor. But Duncan Bannatyne wants to gauge how the product will actually perform on the shelves. So what price are boots retail on this toothbrush up? So the retail of the, the product is £99.99. .99. What are typical electric toothbrushes you sell for now? Um, you've got a low-end um, market, which is anything up to about £25, £30, and then the mid-tier, which is anything up to about £100 and beyond. Philips are generally... What, what justifies yours being at the top end of the range? Well, uh, firstly, it's, uh, the battery is key. So it's actually the fundamental um, issue with consumers of electric toothbrushes. So we've used a very expensive um, lith lithium polymer battery. Um, are, you sure? are you sure a 100-pound toothbrush has got a battery in it? Uh, yeah. Well, I just stick mine in the charger, and I've had it a long time because I can change the heads. Yeah, but what do you think it's charging? Charging a battery? <laughs> What's the... Did you really ask that? <laughs> um, Ryan, I, I wouldn't buy one and use one because I don't like the way it's held because it slims down and it's hard for me to hold it. But I would probably buy them for my, my daughters. But, the, you know, you get up against big competition and I see nothing that's unique enough about it and in any case, the other operators can copy your battery life. So I wish you the best of luck. But I can't invest, so therefore I'm up. Disaster for Ryan as he suffers an early loss at the hands of Duncan Bannatyne. Now it's Kelly Hoppen's turn to cast her critical eye over the product's design. Do you know what? I'm really shocked that someone hasn't done this before because if you think about telephones and computers, I mean, everybody's done the covers. I think it's sitting here now, why has no one ever done a black one opposed to a white one, you know, if people have dark bathrooms? But this one, you can't actually stand. I suppose that's the trade-off between having a sleek design um, and the handle the way it is and having one that stands up and is quite bulky. Look, I think it's a, a fantastic idea and I do think you will sell some, but I think fundamentally the design is flawed in that it doesn't stand. I think that sometimes you can over-engineer something to make it look slick and beautiful and designy, but actually people need to put their toothbrush down. So I'm going to wish you well, but I'm afraid I'm out. More trouble for Ryan as Kelly Hoppen decides his design doesn't stand up. And it looks like Deborah Meaden has also made up her mind. I haven't said a lot, but I've learnt a lot. I've just been sitting listening to you. I think you come across as very good, very credible. I like the design. The trouble is I don't like it enough to think that it's going to be a revolutionary, groundbreaking, we're all suddenly going to say, got to have that style, you know, it's not an iPhone. It's not that everybody's going to say, I've got to have a dot range toothbrush. And actually, I, I think Kelly's point about it not standing up, I think that's quite a detractor. So I'm really sorry, Ryan, you know, you with another product maybe, but this isn't Thank it. You. So I'm afraid I'm out. Uh, Ryan, um, you clearly know what you're talking about. Initially, I thought, no, it's just a bit bonkers, really. And you, know, you, you talk a good game and you sort of swayed me. I've been doing this. <laughs> um, but, but I still don't think I'm going to get there on this one. Good luck with it. I think you will sell some, but um, best of luck, I'm out. Four dragons out. And it seems that Ryan's time in the den is fast drawing to a close. But Peter Jones hasn't quite finished with the entrepreneur. You're valuing your business at 1.3 million and you haven't sold a product yet. You know, I, I appreciate that. Obviously, as a, a startup, um, evaluation is based on assumptions. The assumptions are obviously a standard valuation of taking three years uh, net profit. Yeah, but why would you invest in something that is worth the something in three years at the price today? For me, it's not just investing in this one product. No, no, you're valuing your business. I mean, you know, you've got to realise that I was born on a day, but it wasn't yesterday. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that, I suppose. What I would say is this is launching in 
say, the UK's largest high street retailer. Now, they've very much given me the intent that if it performs well, when they get another big range window, they're willing to increase that. And therefore, the opportunity and the value of the business goes up. No, but why, so why is it worth 1.3 million today? Because, as I say, three years net profit, we're going to deliver um, that valuation. Well, if I said, look, I've got routes to market, and I think it's great, I'll give you a million pounds, but I want 100% of it, you'd sell it, wouldn't you? No. Ryan, come on. I mean, if we think about it as well, if, if any other big multinational was going to develop a product like this, exact same, exact same product, they would invest two, three, four million pounds in this. You wouldn't take a million pounds off me for your idea now? No. Really? Yeah. I have an issue with the fact that you need all of that money and the valuation at 1.3 million. So I'm going to say that I'm out, but good luck. It's all over for Ryan. He may have fought tooth and nail to get his product and investment, but he couldn't persuade the dragons to part with their cash. Good example of getting everything right, yet still walked away with no money. Yeah. Now, that valuation brushed me up the wrong way. Oh, very <laughs>